In high school, you have learned to solve quadratic equations for non-negative discriminants. We will now extend this to negative discriminants. We will do so using a procedure called completing the square. You may encounter this procedure later again in other problems. But why do we need this completing the square for solving quadratic equations? We have our ABC formula, right? Well, let us see in this video. So we look at quadratic equations. So x, a times x squared plus b times x plus c equals zero. We want them really quadratic, so a is not zero. Uh, otherwise, we would lose our quadratic term. If a is not zero, we can divide by it, which we did over here, which means that we can basically get a one in front of the x squared. So we get an x squared plus beta x plus gamma, where beta is just b over a and gamma equals c over a. So for now, we look, we'll look into x squared plus beta times x plus gamma, where beta and gamma are some numbers. Let us first look at the case where we have no linear term, so beta equals zero. In this case, we have x squared plus gamma equals zero, or x squared is minus gamma. And we can solve that. We can have either gamma negative or gamma zero or gamma positive. So if gamma is negative, for example, minus two, then we have x squared equals minus minus two. So x squared equals two, and x equals plus or minus square root of two. If gamma equals zero, we have x squared equals zero. So only x equals zero as solution. And if gamma is positive, for example, five, we have x squared equals minus five. So we are looking for numbers such that its square equals uh, minus five. And we know the solution is plus or minus i times the square root of five. So that is if we do not have a linear term, then it's easy. What can we do if we do have a linear term? Well, we can try to get rid of it to reduce to the first case. We can do so by a procedure which is called completing the square. For example, here we have x squared plus 4x plus 3 equals 0. We now do have a linear term. How can we get rid of it? Well, we write this x squared plus 4x as one thing squared. So x squared plus 4x, what can we do? Well, that is x plus 2 squared. Because if you compute it, you get x squared plus 4x plus 4. Oh, so x squared plus 4x is not x plus 2 squared. We have a 4 too much, so we subtract the 4. So x squared plus 4x equals x plus 2 squared minus 4. And we copy the plus 3, of course. Uh, then, we can, then we have minus 4 plus 3 equals minus 1. Bring it to the other side. We have x plus 2 squared equals 1. And now we have something squared equals 1, then the something equals plus or minus 1. So x plus 2 equals plus or minus 1. So x is either minus 3 or minus 1. So that is what we call completing the square. Now in this example, we had very nice numbers, of course. Let's look at an example with some ugly numbers. So what if we have some x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0? Can we do the same trick? Yes, because now for our x squared minus x, we have to do x minus 1 half squared. Because if we compute x minus 1 half squared, we get x squared minus 2 times 1 half times x, so minus x, plus 1 quarter. So we also have to subtract the minus 1 quarter, and again we copy the minus 1. So there we go. What do we get for our x? A bit more ugly. So the x minus 1 half squared equals 5 over 4. So the x minus 1 half equals plus or minus 5 over 4. Uh, Uh, that is the square root of that, so x equals 1 half plus or minus the square root of 5 divided by 2. Till now we had real solutions. What happens if we get something negative on the right hand side? Well, let's take a look. If you have, for example, the third example, x squared plus 2x plus 2 equals 0. Well, x squared plus 2x equals x plus 1 squared. That gives us x, plus x squared plus 2 times x plus 1. So subtract the 1 to get uh, x plus 1 squared equals x squared plus 2x plus 1 minus 1 gives us the x squared plus 2x and copy the plus 2. Uh, and it yields, if we, uh, we have minus 1 plus 2 equals 1, bring it to the other side, so we get x plus 1 squared equals minus 1. 
So that means something squared equals minus 1. So this something equals plus or minus i. So this x plus 1 equals plus or minus i. So we get x equals minus 1 plus or minus i. So that is how you can use uh, the procedure of completing the square to compute solutions of quadratic equations. But what about our ABC formula? Well, you have learned how to compute solutions of quadratic equations. You had the ABC rule. So if you have your quadratic equation, ax squared with bx plus c equals 0, then the solution equals minus b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. This one over here. So let's see what happens if we use that on our examples. So x squared plus 4x plus 3 equals 0. Then a equals 1, b equals 4, and c equals 3. So we get minus 4 plus or minus b squared 16 minus 4 times a times c minus 12. So we get uh, minus 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 equals 2. So we get our solutions minus 3 and minus 1, just as we had before. And what about the other one? So this one, x squared plus 2x plus 2 equals 0. The same, b equals 2, so minus 2 over here, and b squared over here, minus 4ac, so minus 4 over 2. Uh, then we have the square root of minus 4. Uh, turning that into the 4i, so we get as uh, solutions x equals minus 1 plus or minus i, just as we had before. Well, what a coincidence. Is this a coincidence or probably not? Let's take a look at the general case. If you have the problem x squared plus beta x plus gamma equals 0. Also, in this case, we can complete the square, of course. Then we get x plus beta over 2 uh, squared, gives us x squared plus 2 times beta over 2 times x, so beta times x, plus uh, beta over 2 squared, so plus beta squared over 4, so we have to subtract that, and then copy the gamma. <coughs> now we bring the beta squared over 4 to the other side, and the gamma to the other side, take out the factor of 4, so we get x plus beta over 2 squared equals a quarter times beta squared minus 4 gamma squared. And then we can solve for x, x plus beta squared equals something, so x plus beta equals the plus or minus the square root of the something, and we bring the beta to, to the other side. And then remember what the beta and the gamma were. Beta equals b over a, gamma equals c over a. And if we substitute that in our equation for x, so the b, of, b over here goes here, here we have a b over a squared, here we have 4 times c over a, uh, we multiply by a over a over here to get the a squared below. Then we can take out the uh, a squared, square root of a squared equals a, so we get a 1 over 2a over there, and we are left with the b squared minus 4ac. So if we simplify that, we get x equals minus b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a, which is exactly your ABC formula. So your ABC formula is in fact derived by completing the square.